Hi everybody, welcome back. So if you've watched my channel for any period of time, you know I've been talking about this outdoor filament test. And this all kind of comes down from me trying to print taillight housings and taillight lenses for my old Jeep CJ7. The um, ABS didn't perform very well. The um, lenses have been out there for, what, nearly a year now, and that, that clearish um, transparent ABS looks like old parchment paper now. So I'm trying to find something, other filaments that will perform better. I've got some contenders here I'm going to try. I'll introduce you to them here momentarily. And I also want to test, um, you know, like a brake strength too to see how brittle they become. I'd like to do this during the month of July in Arizona. I'd like to leave them all out all month of July because we have it all here in Arizona in July. Temperatures 115 to 120 degrees. We got UV index. It's just off the scale. We've got the monsoon where we'll get pouring rain and we've even got the dust storms to go along with it, although I doubt that will really affect the filament any. So my intent is to print some things and leave them out all summer long. So first off, let's look at the contenders for the filament. And this first one, this is POM, P-O-M. And in every case, I tried to get transparent, because I'm going back to my taillight lenses again. I tried to get transparent when I couldn't find transparent. I tried to get natural, and when I couldn't find natural, I went with white. So I have white POM. I've never even printed with POM before, so this is going to be a first for me. This hasn't even been opened yet. Then I have the Polymaker Polylight Polycarbonate. And I know most of you probably already think that polycarbonate is not going to do well out in high UV applications. But you know what? I want to try it because I want to be able to compare them. Next, we have Transparent Overture PETG. And my experiment so far suggests PETG handles heat and UV fairly well. But again, I want to compare it to the other, so that's why it's here. Next, we have the Tallman Bridge Nylon. And um, this is a natural color. I've had this roll forever. There's more than enough left on it to run these tests. Now, I have everyone white. Can you see that? Everyone white PLA Plus. Everybody is telling me now, hey, if you want an outdoor filament, go with a PLA Plus. It's really better than everything. So that's why PLA Plus is here. We also have the Jar S transparent or natural. They call it transparent. I call this kind of a natural standard PLA. We're going to test this too. Let's see how much better PLA Plus performs with heat and UV over um, regular, regular PLA. And last but not least, I have ASA, which I have read is the new king of outdoor filaments. I have printed a little bit with this, and to be honest with you, I haven't had great luck with figuring it out yet. But I got a couple of weeks to go. I'd like to get these out no later than, you know, early in July at least. I'd like to have them out on July 1st, but if I don't get them out till the end of the first week, I'll survive that. They can sit out there through the first week in August, which, if anything, is even more brutal than July here in Arizona. But um, ASA, I'm looking forward to that. Now, the printers. Everything that can be printed, you know, 250 degrees and doesn't need to be enclosed is going to get printed on the GTEC A10M. And mainly because that's printing really well for me right now with the new SKR 1.4 turbo board. Um, and I'm lazy. It, it auto levels. It has the magnetic bendable bed. It's really easy and quick to print with. Everything that requires an enclosure or temperatures above 250 is going to be printed. You've probably seen it. My enclosed Ender 3, which is inside that funky looking cabinet, it has an SKR 1.3 board and um, some other modifications that I'm not going to go into. Let's just, let's just say that it is not stock. So those are the printers in question. That's the timeline we are going to do. That's the filament we are going to be using. What am I going to print? Well, first I want something for appearance. 
I've got a lot of printing to do. I want to have one side, the back of my house faces the west here, unfortunately. <laughs> I guess it's better than the front of the house. The back of the house faces the west. It gets all the god-awful afternoon sun here in the summertime, so I am going to put a pegboard up and I am going to hang these things directly facing west. I'm also going to put another set of what I print. I have a 12 by 26 foot long, 12 by 26 or 12 by 30, I forget. Anyway, I've got a metal garage out in my back and it is uninsulated, so I'm going to put a set out in there as well and we'll test just the heat without adding the humidity and the other weather elements. And then I'm going to keep a set inside in our air conditioned environment. And I've been trying to make this video quick before the air conditioner starts back up so you can actually still hear me. So this is the first thing I'm going to print. This is just a thin, I think I made it three or four millimeters thick. It has two, two top, two bottom layers. 25% um, honeycomb infill, and this is just going to hang from the pegboard in the sun, and we're going to see how badly UV affects the color. Now, the next thing, you guys may have seen me print these before in another video. My idea was to put these in a housing, stick a square, like, you know, breaker bar in the center, and using a uh, a digital torque adapter, twist it, and see how much pressure it takes to break. Um, I had mixed results with these. I actually went up to three quarters from half inch just so I could get more turning force on it before the actual square thing turned in the spun in the um, in the center hole. Somebody, in several of you have sent me some really good ideas and directed me to other other channels that have done this, and. Um, one of you, I think it was Ray, suggested I use a dog bone shape. And he sent me a couple of examples and some of his own testing. And I kind of bastardized it and made these. This allows me to do this without making a fancy fixture. I can put a breaker bar in a, in a vise and get my torque adapter in the other end and simply twist it until it snaps. So, and these are quick and easy to print as opposed to those other things. So I think this is what I'm going to go with. These have, um, I think I did two top and bottom layers. I think I did 50% triangle infill on these. But um, I still have some more tweaking on these to go. I want to make one with every filament and test them to make sure they all fall within the range of my, um, my torque adapter. So that's what it's going to be. That's where I'm headed. Over the next two weeks, I am going to be getting all this printing done and all this tweaking of the parts done. And then I'm going to get these things out and we're going to leave them out in the, um, in the hellish outdoors in the Valley of the Sun. And we're going to see how they survive it. If you have any tests, any um, suggestions, leave them in the comment section below. If there's a filament that you would like me to test, send me enough of it for me to print a couple of these things. And, um, or print them yourself. Ask me for the STLs. I'll give them to you. Print them yourself and send them to me. And I will get them out there in my tests as well. So that's the introduction to this. I hope you, um, I hope I made it plain what I'm trying to do. This is not scientific. I'm doing this just for my own sport and amusement and education. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Hit notifications. And I will catch you the next time. Bye for now.